Hello, everyone. Welcome to another BitGuide episode. Uh, we have a very, very interesting topic today. Uh, we are going to talk about... Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a scandal, it's not a surprise, but um, Sina found a very interesting Wall Street Journal story that we want to talk about today, um, which is about the crypto market. And um, it's all about the insider trading that happens in the, in the space for obvious reasons and we want to talk about that and what it means and <clears throat> how it happens and who profits and who loses and so on and so forth so um sina is with me here how are you sina how's it going hi rk what's up uh i'm excited to start today uh interesting but also sad discussion of never-ending crypto scams yeah exactly maybe before we go ahead and talk about this uh, let's talk about the two new releases of BitGuide. So wh whoever is listening to this, if you're on YouTube or if you are on your podcasting app or if you're on Clubhouse, uh, go and check our website. It's bitguide.io. And we have released two new uh, things. One is a course about Bitcoin custody. Uh, oh, perfect. Yeah. So C Sina is just sharing it on, on, on the video. So if you're on YouTube, you're going to see the website uh, on screen. And uh, we have released a new course, which is about custody methods for Bitcoin. This is a beginner's course. I have done that course. So if you're interested, take a look, give us feedback. We always want to improve. So uh, feedback is highly, highly appreciated share uh, everything we do with others if you find it valuable. And if you don't find it valuable, uh, you can simply ignore us or give us at least your negative feedback because we always um, uh, seek to grow and improve. That's number one. Number two is uh, Sina released an amazing article. If you go to the website on the resources, it's called the dollar cost averaging or DCA uh, article. I have heard only good things about this article from a few people who have read it already. I've thoroughly enjoyed it myself. So I highly recommend you read this. It's going to help you to, uh, you know, understand markets, understand the right strategy for a volatile market uh, like Bitcoin is as an investment as, or as a savings technology. So, um, as I mentioned, this article, I went through it, Sina, and it seems like the guys in the crypto market are thoroughly enjoying a non-regulated environment and insider trading activities, as, as, as we can tell. Maybe tell us a little bit what happened and... Um, specifically who profited and who lost <laughs> so let's see if i can uh, share this article uh, for you whatever it? reason it signed in yeah it got in without even signing in so um but i, I have also sent a Sina's voice. what's that i do not copy Sina's voice oh you do not copy Sina's voice one second. No, no. Ah, uh, no. Wait. <clears throat> um, that is unfortunate. Okay, Sina, can you say something? Hello. Yeah, now you should hear him. Yeah, it's okay now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for, uh, for informing us. Like, it would be a pain to have talked a lot and that <laughs> nobody heard it. <laughs> Oh. For sure. Uh, I've oh. I've had the same situation before. No, it's okay. Awesome. So yeah, uh, if you, uh, uh, I am sharing right now an article. I'm looking at an article from Wall Street Journal titled "Crypto Might Have an Insider Trading Problem." 
people who are joining on Clubhouse, you can access it uh, through the Big Guides Telegram channel. We have a PDF version and the link and also the link to other, other stuff that we will talk about. Um, let's see if I can, uh, I can uh, pin. I can do that. Go ahead. I, yeah, I will do it. You can try that. Yeah. Yeah. So pin the link to the Telegram channel so people can 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 access the article. But basically, this is one of the uh, most interesting documentations of insider trading in crypto. Obviously, you know, for years people have been it's thinking that this is happening, and it's it's really no surprise. But to have real and hard data uh, and irrefutable evidence is something that that's really interesting. So the article basically reports on research done by Argus Inc., which is a research com uh, company. And uh, they, they specifically focus on a token called Gnosis, which is some nonsense uh, blockchain-based prediction market coin. And uh, um, so basically they find a wallet that accumulates $360,000 of this coin uh, in the run up to the announcement of it being listed on Binance. So six days before the announcement, they accumulate this much. And then four minutes after the announcement, uh, the wallet sells all of it for 500,000, pocketing 140K, uh, a 40% profit. Like so easy, perfectly timed. How, uh, how is this possible without having insider knowledge basically? So, um, and, and here they also have this interesting uh, chart of how the price moves. You can see like when they started buying, the price was about to go up. And then over the next six days, they accumulate, accumulate. Immediately after the announcement on Binance, price goes up from 300 to um, 400 and they sell it all. And of course, right after that price crashes back to around 300. <laughs> and um and basically, anyone who was who was rushing to front run uh, other buyers, you know, a lot of people hear the announcement, they rush to the uh, exchange to buy so that they can front run other retail buyers. But unfortunately, uh, the insiders are much better at, in, in that game. So what happens is basically anyone who bought on the announcement became exit liquidity for this guy. And he was dumping on them. And all of this 140, which is like easily one year or for a lot of people, two years of income in the US um, in four minutes. How's that, RK? The, the thing is, you know, uh, <laughs> as I said in our previous room, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense to newbies to understand who is the counterpart or who, who are the counterparties here who profited and who lost money right so let, let's let's start from from uh this the the start so you have the investor the newbie investor who has no clue what's happening who has heard of bitcoin the first time in his life and he knows there's other bitcoins and you know crypto is the future and i'm gonna go and uh trade a little bit to make some money right that's the that's the that's one party, right? The other party is uh, Binance. Okay, who is Binance? Binance is by volume the largest cryptocurrency exchange that makes trade possible between buyers and sellers. So if you want to buy or sell a cryptocurrency, you go and open an account with these guys, right? So it's an exchange. So these guys have or how do they make money? The way they make money is every time an investor buys or sells any cryptocurrency or asset, they make a commission. So their incentive is to motivate you to buy and sell. Like they're not interested to uh, promote the same thing or philosophy that we promote in BitGuide, which is uh, just um, invest in, in something like Bitcoin and um, 
just hold it and store it in your own wallet, right? That's not profitable for a business like uh, Binance. And maybe after this, I can uh, tell you a little bit about my experience from my uh, brokerage time. So that's the way these guys make money. Now, the other side of this is that uh, there is this crypto investors, not sorry, investors, the crypto inventors who come up with this brilliant marketing idea of creating a brand new token and surrounding it with a brand new story that um, uh, is sounds super innovative. And they start to approach these guys at Binance and say, listen, we have this super innovative new crypto token. Why don't you list it on it? We have a 60% pre-mine, which means we have we hold ourselves in maybe three or four wallets, 60 or 70% of the total supply, but the rest we want to sell to the public. So why don't you list our cryptocurrency, right? So they have not paid anything for those tokens. They just made up those tokens out of nothing, okay? That's this party. And the way they make money is quite simple. As soon as this token is, is, is listed on any of these exchanges, it starts to trade in dollars and they can monetize it. They can sell it to the dumb investor who buys it and they can buy Bitcoin with it or they can, uh, you know, they, 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 make, they make the profit that way. Now, what this article, however, is talking about is none of these parties, but the people who work at the exchange or probably who work at the exchange because people who do this know in advance when a specific token is about to get listed. And so they go ahead and they purchase it before this happens. Because as soon as it happens, it goes suddenly up. This dumb investor comes in, buys the token, and they start selling it at a profit. That's called insider trading. It's a very, very old-fashioned way to, uh, to, 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 to actually um, to, to do fraud. And it's illegal in the regulated space of um, stocks and um, equities. So this is what it is. This is what, what it's all about. And these guys have apparently got cut because uh, these wallets run on open, uh, I don't even want to call them blockchains because they're just databases, like open transparent databases and everyone can see everyone. So when they buy and sell these shit coins, everyone can see them. So it's not very hard to identify them, but it's hard to get them into trouble because this space is still not regulated and the dumb investor still falls for that. And that's what we're trying to, you know, through education here at Big Guide, try to avoid, to educate people, to make them understand that these guys are not promoting this shit in order to, you know, give you some value. That's not what they're doing. See, you know, if we had like, Full, fully free markets where everyone knows the risks and things are transparent. That would be one thing, right? Uh, at that point, probably getting scammed is more on you. But um, what we have today is we are we have been living in this glass box created by governments who make us feel like they're in control. They have regulations. They things you know you can't get easily scammed. There's legal system which you know we know we know most of them don't, don't work as advertised. But uh, nevertheless, there are lots of protections for the average guy. And the problem starts when you take that person who is. Uh, comfortable and used to being protected by all these agencies run on run on uh, significant amounts of taxes uh, moving into and move that person into the unregulated no laws completely free market environment and this person doesn't have ha hasn't grown the immune system to to live in that environment right and that's when you know, you need people who explain all sort of the, the the different kinds of shenanigans and scams that are happening in the space to these to these people. So, um, 
you know, I would be fine with, 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 with free market function uh, if it was transparent and, and you had uh, uh, all the information there. But what we are seeing right now is people, these exchanges are dragging people who have no idea about the extent of uh, scamming that you can do in the space and you, you drag them in and you sell them, sell them nonsense, basically. So this is this is this has created a, this, you know, a gap for these businesses to make loads of money hands over fist super easily. I mean, there's nothing better than this. If I if I had no moral reservations, I would definitely be in this business. I mean, what's easier than creating your own coins? Uh, just write a program and and develop uh, millions of dollars of market cap. Um, and, and sell it to, you know, give it to influencer to shill. It's all free. And then as soon as it appreciates a little bit, you get some liquidity, you exit, and that's a lot of good money, right? So uh, same things happening with these coin listings and insider trading. The stuff that seems to us hard to do is actually, there is, you know, faces basically no friction and no barriers in the in the crypto market. And this is hard for the average person to understand. Uh, this is a space where anything goes, right? So you have to have this mindset. You have to have an adversarial mindset. You have to be ready. Everything is a scam. Everybody's a scammer. You know, that's the mindset you should, you should adopt in this market. And let me share um, some, some other information about the traditional markets. So you might ask, you know, again, is this illegal or what could be done? So now, right now I'm sharing uh, a, an image uh, of Steve Cohen and uh, his associate Martoma. And you can find this in uh, the link to this image in um, BitGuide's Telegram channel. And uh, Basically, these, you know, Steve Cohen was one of the, you know, the very famous and su successful billionaires in, uh, on Wall Street, uh, a hedge fund, uh, making lots of money on insider trading. Uh, his associate Martoma was basically the guy who did the dirty work, and he uh, went ahead and talked to uh, insiders of different projects and companies. In one instance, they they he got friends with a scientist who was in charge of trials for an Alzheimer's disease uh, drug. And then basically, uh, in, as part of those conversations, he, he uh, realized that the scientist is not optimistic and actually hints that the trials are not going well. Uh, then, of course, uh, Steve Cohen's firm sold all their shares in that uh, company. And after it was announced that the product isn't going anywhere, it tanked. SEC caught them, but uh, Cohen, being a professional, had actually covered all the trails, and uh, he did it in a way that there was no way to easily, you know, link him to the fraud. Martoma got caught. The scientists got caught, and SEC basically charged them in 2012. And later, it, it ended with a financial charge. So nothing majorly happened to Cohen and he got away. Another example is this guy, Raj Rajaratnam. He was also caught uh, on insider trading. He got a phone call before he made a trade and then SEC tracked it. And um, this guy was apparently, apparently the dumbest scammer because uh, he got caught. But uh, after seven years in prison, he got out last year and did an interview with CNBC. Again, the link is available on Big Guide's Telegram channel. If someone can post a link to the channel, I would do that. Be nice. Um, uh, for those in Clubhouse, we're also recording this and will be published on YouTube later. But the problem is, uh, these cases are far and few in between, and. Uh, uh, SEC gets, you know, a fraction of these situations. Um, and then they later say, okay, you see, you know, there's a random chance that we we catch you. So that kind of deters some of these Wall Street guys from, from engaging in insider trading further. 
But even if when they're caught, it's just a financial a financial charge usually, except if you're super dumb in this case. Um, Steve Cohen, for example, was really, really, uh, you know, prepared for all this. And sometimes, you know, little guys get caught, they get into prison. But for the most part, you just give back some of the profits of that fraud as fine. And SEC is happy. They prove that they are in charge and they have the power. They also get some funding um, as if the taxes and all the other government support is not enough. And then uh, retail investor also thinks, uh, you know, justice was done. Everything's everything. Everything is fine. Move on. Right. And that's the traditional markets that have really well developed regulatory environment. And SEC, uh, of course, you know, focused on all these. But we have none of this in crypto, zero amount of responsibility and accountability in crypto. SEC cannot even get a handle on the issue of illegal securities being listed on these uh, exchanges before even getting to issues of insider trading and all kinds of other shenanigans. Just the fact that these coins exist run afoul uh, of the SEC laws and regulations, sorry. And basically, they haven't even been able to do anything about it. So expecting the legal system to do something about this is just um, insane at this point. Yeah, you know, the thing is, um, I think what a lot of people don't understand is they don't understand that 95% uh, of everything you see in the crypto space is just marketing. And the reason for that is quite obvious because I, I just told you what the exchanges actually do uh, in order to make money, right? I myself worked in a Forex casino. I call it a casino. It was a bank, but it was essentially a casino uh, where we offered Forex trading platforms, not only Forex, but derivatives trading platforms to all sorts of investors, right? So, and the business model of the entire thing was that we made money when the client either traded or lost money. And the way it works is quite simple because the market maker essentially makes or can or is the counterparty, right? So for example, if Sina or Icaros are my clients and I open an account for them at my brokerage house and they and they buy shitcoin X, right? Um, and they don't ask for physical delivery. I just tell them, hey, you just bought shitcoin X and I just display it on their, on, their, on their screen, right? As soon as they lose money, that, I mean, I don't go and buy the same shitcoin. I don't hedge my, myself. I just tell Sina, okay, you just bought this, shitcoin it's in your portfolio it's in your account it's yours right five months later he sells it at a loss who lost money and who made money Sina lost all of his money and all of his losses went to my pocket the broker right so I don't even have to pass these 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 losses to to the to the token uh, to the token issuer in this case, uh, I come from the Forex uh, world, you know, from derivatives works. This is how it works with banks. I don't know if exchanges do the same, but where I, where I was working, Sina, we made money when clients lost money, literally, literally. The client, like if the probability of clients losing money is over 90%, why the hell would you ever hedge him? It doesn't make any sense to hedge him it, uh, unless there's a client who has like $2 million, $3 million on his account with you. And that's just too risky to not hedge it, right? Because he can sustain a position uh, probably in, in indefinitely because he's not using as much leverage as a $10,000 account who uses 200 to one leverage and is wiped out in one trade, right? So um, in essence, guys, these exchanges do not want the best for you. All they care about is to uh, 
shit post these shit coins on their exchanges and to promote it to you. So you come on their exchange and you buy and sell them so they can make money. That's it. That's why you do not see anyone or any exchange tell you come and buy Bitcoin and withdraw it into your exchange or it withdraw it into your into your wallet because that's not a short-term profitable business model, right? There are some very intelligent market players like Swan Bitcoin. Um, and I don't say that because I have any affiliation to them. I just find them amazing. Um, who do say uh, or who do tell the truth. They come and tell you, hey, buy Bitcoin, think long-term, here's the education, withdraw it to your own custody and think long-term and just don't sell, right? That's, that, that's actually the long-term play that they play because they are on the side of the customer. They're not against their customers. And over the long-term, of course, that's the more intelligent thing you can do. But over the short-term, obviously, they don't make as much money like Coinbase does or like Binance does. Icarus, you wanted to say something? Oh, oh sorry. My, my mic was... Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, I just wanted to add something. Uh, uh, maybe the problem is uh, lies beneath the misconception about the financial market. Can you speak a little bit louder? the crypto market. C can you speak you a little bit me? louder? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you copy me now? Yeah, we do yeah. hear you, but your voice is not very, I mean... Let me get it, back to you. No, I mean, Let it me was the same back. last week. Uh, we can hear you, it's fine, but it's just that your voice is not very uh, vivid. <clears throat> oh, oh, okay, let me get back to you. Uh, do you copy me now? Yeah, we do hear you. Go ahead, no worries. Very good, very good. I think the problem uh, lies beneath some sort of misconception about the financial markets and also cryptocurrencies. First of all, financial markets has never been meant to make everybody rich, okay? Second point is uh, the misunderstanding about cryptocurrencies. What happened in 2019 bull run and what happened regarding some kind, some project, particularly Dogecoin by Elon Musk made a some sort of misconception in uh, people's minds that this market is about to make many people rich. However, it's not. It is, uh, let's say, um, absolutely the opposite of the nature of every financial market from the beginning, almost a century, almost, uh, uh, let's say, seven, seven decades ago from Netherlands until now. So if we understand that, Financial markets are not meant to make everybody rich, then maybe 50% of the job is done. Thank you. I 100% agree with that. Do you have any comments on that, Sina? Oh, great. I mean, like I said, I mean, you have to just uh, go in these with uh, a lot of uh, expectation for seeing scams, right? So gullible retail is what's driving all the activity in these markets. That's why we have 10,000 or more coins. It's all because of that. Yeah, smart money, everyone who is listening, smart money doesn't buy a shit coin. Smart money, if they enter the space, goes and buys Bitcoin. Um, there is some players who act as if they're smart money, like uh, Raul Powell, who is, uh, you know, who is, <laughs> who is a great actor I... of, of being a macro investor. But I mean, his track record, he, he completely he completely screwed up his, his reputation because he started with Bitcoin in 2020 and then he started to drift away into shit coins and he even promoted Terra and Luna. And uh, I mean, he didn't put a tattoo on his arm like, like Mike Novogratz, but um, he was promoting it. And he was even at the top of the market saying that he has never been as bullish 
ever in his life on Ethereum. And he is uh, irresponsibly long, and I'm quoting now, irresponsibly long ETH, over 60% of his portfolio. And uh, that was the top of the market. And uh, look at the market now, right? Um, I wonder if he was using leverage because if he was, he's probably... Uh, he, he has probably gotten margin called or something like that. So the, the, the moral of the story is everyone who's listening, sell your shit coins, think long-term, have a low time preference. Don't try to time the market. No one can time the market. These coins are time bombs. They come every four years and they go. You have no idea if you let's see if coin. I can. Let's see if I can. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just about to say you just have no idea if you're still holding for dear life onto your shitcoin. You just do not know if your shitcoin is ever gonna come back up in terms of Bitcoin. Okay, in terms of dollars, it might come up at some point, maybe in the next four years. But maybe in the next four years, it will never come up because there is a flood of new shit coins with new stories. You do not know. You just don't know. And against Bitcoin, it is over 99% of all shit coins that exist today have a history of going down over the long term versus Bitcoin. It's that simple. Everything goes down against Bitcoin. These are just short-term scams to steal your money um, through marketing, using uh, regulatory loopholes uh, and um, regulatory arbitrage opportunities. Go ahead, Sina, sorry. Exactly, and the arbitrages between people thinking they have some sort of protection and entering uh, this wild, wild west. Let's see if I can play a just a few seconds of what Raul Pal was recommending to his uh, viewers. Let's see if you can get the audio. Um, here is like uh, what they've been saying about Terra, just to complement what you said. Um, Let me know if the audio is basically risk you can hear. Stuff like can you hear the audio? Terra Network. Yes. You can just. Okay, play so let me play the, play the yeah. whole. So, so it, basically, he's louder. saying that it's make it louder. <clears throat> basically, he's saying that Terra is awesome because you can get risk free return on it. Stuff like Terra Network, you can just put money, stake the network, and get 20%. And they're basically risk free if you want to own that network. Same with Ethereum. This is mind blowing. So you can just quickly park your assets by flicking up screen and get different yields. And then there's going to be, you know, yield farming, all the different ways of getting multiple yield products. And eventually we'll get to a system of risk weighting. This is a high risk 20% yield. This is a low risk 3% yield. You just do it accordingly. There's no middleman. It's just no application man. <laughs> Yeah, no middleman. No, absolutely no middleman. No middleman, exactly. Um, you know, he sounds so with his accent and he sounds so professional and believable, right? With his, with his uh, wow. real vision uh, company who provides financial education, quote unquote. Um, you know, I wonder how much money they got from all these scam coins in order to promote them on their channels. I wonder, like, it's so all about you sacrificing your, your, your reputation when you, when you, when you uh, promote these. Uh, coins, right? I mean, over the long term, like how I, I, I don't know. It's it's so stupid. It you know, make any sense. you know, this is this is par for the course for TradFi guys. That's that's their game. You know, that's what they do. They have to scam people to to to, to profit. Um, you know, lots of examples, just never ending. Like this is another example I'm sharing right now from Goldman Sachs. You know, there was an article on Reuters. Goldman Sachs executive says firm gain from trading against clients. And exactly like you, you said, you know, they bought stuff before their clients, they front run, where is that? Uh, profiting for trade, trading ahead or against their own clients. Same, same, 
same stuff. I mean, the, we just hear a few examples here and there, but but that's that's the game. And these TradFi guys just want to replicate all that in crypto. So the crypto scams are nothing new, basically. They're just copying Wall Street scams with 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 without you know any sort of regulation or risk. So when you go on Binance uh, website, you you'd see you know tons of coins being shielded, like you know Binance US has select from over a hundred cryptocurrencies. Like you said, you know the whole game is to sell so many things to people. You know maximize trades, sell buy buy sell, and and actually if you go to the Binance dot com it's not a hundred it's 600 coins that they're shilling for some reason they thought you know they have to be a little bit more conservative in the us um you go on coinbase same idea you know they are just shilling the it's just about numbers you know more coins better bigger portfolio better uh but how can you research you know when you when you're buying a hundred things how can you research any of them how could you be you know doing anything intelligent and of course, the result of this is uh, right now I'm sharing a tweet from Sam Callahan. Uh, he did uh, interesting research recently on. Oh wait, um, you need well, to send me. You, you need to you need to share this uh, with the with the room. Can you can you send this link to to me uh, or to to Telegram to the to Telegram? Me, oh, okay. Yeah, send it to the Telegram. You guys, you have to see this uh, graph. This is this is amazing. This is incredible. This is incredible. So, can you send it to Telegram? So, yes. Um, Until you send it, Sina, I'd like to add something. As you said, these um, problems regarding cryptocurrency are, are new. Let's say we had the same um, scandals. We had the same scam in Wall Street, like Centennial Technologies, like Bernard Madoff, like Enron. One of them even had, uh, let's say, people lost $20 billion. Even uh, when uh, this situation was absolutely regulated by, by SEC, but, but, but those auditors in SEC had been fooled or somehow convinced that the business is absolutely legitimate, but everything was about that middleman, which uh, Mr. Paul, uh, said there is no middleman, but uh, there, there is always a middleman. Thank you for sharing Callahan's tweet. Yeah, Sina, go ahead. Uh, you were saying about the graph. So basically, he tracked all these coins that had ICOs and got listed on Coinbase before and after. And he tracked their price afterwards and saw that uh, most of them got basically obliterated after being posted on uh, Coinbase. So if you bought anything that Coinbase shilled after they listed on the exchange, uh, you're a bag holder right now. And they also especially went after the top 10 recommended coins by Coinbase. They all are also, you know, performed horribly. Uh, horribly, against so you, you, H horribly against Bitcoin. Horribly against Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, it's against not Bitcoin. Been, so um, I reached out to him uh, and we talked a little bit about his, his work. Uh, re really, really interesting stuff. And basically it's Coinbase customers, Coinbase crypto customers are ex became exit liquidity for whoever was inside the project and wanted to get out. Of course, when you put it on Coinbase, it suddenly opens up to you know the whole uh, you know, a, a large population of retail investors, lots of liquidity, great opportunity to get out because if you don't have liquidity, you will sell your holding, but the price will drop super, super fast, right? So you need liquidity to get out and that's what Coinbase provides. You know what I find interesting, um, Sina, I might be wrong on this, but it looks like the older the coins are, the more losses there is against Bitcoin. <laughs> and actually, uh, another interesting tweet was this week from Corey Clipston, who basically said there has been zero coins that hit all-time high versus Bitcoin twice in two cycles, right? So if anything like reached an ATH in the previous cycle against Bitcoin, um, 
next cycle, it will never reach that level and will continue going down. And that's true for one of the best performing ones, which is ETH as well. Um, so if you got in the hype early with some, hopefully with some insider knowledge, uh, you get into the hype, you get to, you get, you, you benefit from uh, all the other idiots who buy whatever that uh, uh, influencers like that rock pal guy was shilling. You can profit from that, but that's it. You know, after the, after the, after it peaks, it's all downhill. It's never going to come back. You know, next cycle, you can see new scams and play with them. But uh, the old scams uh, die in every cycle. Like more recently, I'm seeing this discussion of, uh, you know, basically, you know, NFT hype is completely gone. Uh, DeFi cooled down. And I think, you know, some of these crypto networks, they will soon invent something new. We are still in a bear market, you know, within, within months, we should see some sort of other names jumping out. Um, and and yeah. and uh, we'll be there to catch like it. Web three, web three. Yeah, maybe maybe for the listeners to give a very simple explanation. Uh, maybe you're new. Maybe you're seeing this carnage and you don't understand why. Uh, I mean, this is a new technology. Why not replicate the technology on other utilities and so on and so forth? Uh, it's a very, very wild topic. We could talk about this over hours, but I'm going to try to put it into very, very small pieces of, of, of explanation. It is very simple. The blockchain is nothing but a simple database. And this database is uh, similar to an Excel sheet. A number of transactions are in it. And this Excel sheet has debits and credits on it. Money comes in, money goes out, right? That's what a blockchain is. There, there is nothing innovative about it. The only innovative part of it was when Satoshi came and said, we are going to uh, distribute this Excel sheet or this database into hundreds of thousands of computers. Everyone is allowed to copy it. And we're going to uh, add a proof of work on top of this in order, to, in order to make it uncorruptible, which essentially means that it becomes an unchangeable database. Now, as soon as you want to build utility on something like that, you need flexibility. And if you want to be flexible, you have to have a database that is more centralized. Because if it's not centralized, you cannot simply change it. You have to have the permission of everyone in the network in order to change the database. So a blockchain, just to make, it, make the point here, is the worst form of technology to use for anything of utility. None. Everything that has utility is better performed on a centralized database because you can upgrade it easier, because you can uh, do stuff much, much faster. Um, Bitcoin is super slow and Bitcoin is very inefficient. Why? because it is supposed to be this way, because we do not want anyone to be able to change it. This is its feature. Its biggest feature is exactly that, because it's money. And money is not supposed to be able to be, able to be changed by anyone, right? And as soon as you come up with some idea of a token of utility, it becomes a security. It becomes something like an equity, a stock that you have produced out of thin air. And you should be able to change it because otherwise, if you cannot change it, it doesn't make any sense. So the word blockchain makes absolute no sense for any of these tokens, none. This is a race towards centralization. The more centralized they become, the, um, the better they are. The, the better they are, 
like you can see it already happening to ETH because ETH is being out, uh, outpaced by uh, Cardano and uh, Binance and all these other tokens, right? Why? Because they're more centralized. Because they're more centralized. That's it. That's it. And the entire point of crypto, quote unquote, is that it is supposed to be decentralized. So name me anything other than Bitcoin that makes sense. It just doesn't. It just doesn't make any sense. None. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I can make it, I can build a company in uh, whatever offshore island, Cayman Islands or something that's not regulated. And I can create my own spreadsheet online and sell it to everyone as new coin. It would be absolutely no zero difference between uh, the tokens that we have on the market, these crypto tokens. Uh, the only difference is I would be honest in that case and calling this my spreadsheet token. Uh, there's no you no no benefit of moving into blockchain um, except the marketing side, right? So basically, what what I'm saying, the world, the economy doesn't benefit from anything being specifically on a blockchain. The only benefit of the the only benefit I can think of is, you know, it it moves something outside of the control of the government so you suddenly break free of all the regulations that that limits who can access these financial products but you can you can have an offshore business that's uh uh really making their products and tokens available to anyone and and so even that is not a real reason for for moving to blockchain the only reason to have blockchain is if you want to operate outside of any governments, any regulations, because you want something neutral. You want a neutral commodity with no control, something that's impossible to kill. And the cost of that is a lot. You know, you get slow, you get um, you get somewhat expensive, right? And that's only worth it if you want to be in an adversarial position in a in a defensible place to be unkillable. But for many of the other services and utilities, you don't need that. You simply deal with a company. You know, we buy lots of things from companies, lots of services from companies, and nothing and, and everything just works. It's in a free market. You can choose the companies you work with. There is no need for decentralization to buy a service. If I'm not happy with it, I'll go to another company, right? As decentralization is only needed when you're planning and preparing to be government resistant and change resistant and you only need that for some kind of neutral commodity neutral money other otherwise it just makes no sense yeah unless you want to uh, do quick tra transactions right as soon as uh, you want to make quick transactions because at the end of the day bitcoin is money um and for that we have lightning which is a layer on top of bitcoin that makes bitcoin move much much faster uh, to to do very small payments with, but that's you know for the future of Bitcoin. But for now, uh, this is the innovation. The innovation of this entire space is Bitcoin, and uh, for these reasons, and everything outside of it is full of scams, full of insider trading, and um, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. Everything you see outside of Bitcoin is known in the financial markets for decades. That, that's a very old game. Uh, issuing, an, uh, issuing a stock and pump it inside the market and buying it before that is the oldest playbook of insider trading. There is nothing new about that, right? And it's just a replay of history in the crypto space. And as soon as, and this is my last point, as soon as regulators come in and regulate this, this the crap out of this space, you are going to see the biggest shakeout. And yes, I mean another shakeout outside of the current shakeout in the entire crypto space. Everything is going to be shaken out completely. They're going to be devastated. As soon as regulators come in, it's going to be a disaster because uh, they won't be able to, to, to sell their tokens on any of these big exchanges uh, unless 
you know, the exchanges start to offer these uh, tokens outside of uh, the US or the European Union. But there is not much capital that they can take from people. And awareness is going to become bigger and bigger and bigger. And the safest place you can be in this space is simply holding your Bitcoin with your own wallet and um, educate yourself, take our courses, listen to our podcast and uh, learn to be sovereign. Okay, opt out of the entire system. Crypto is not different from fiat. It's the exactly same playbook. And that's what we're trying to uh, educate people about. Uh, basically, the only innovation that's happening in crypto world is copying fiat scams in a world without regulations. You know, um, creating tokens out of thin air. That's the exact game played for 100 years or more by financial institutions and, and authorities creating fiat out of thin air, same same thing. Then, uh, so, so that's basically feeding all the ICOs and all the all the innovation that's happening is, is just that, you know, creating money out of thin air. And then in the DeFi space, uh, they, are, they are learning to replicate fractional reserve banking and rehypothecation, uh, which we have an episode on. And, and that's exactly you know, what financial institutions have, have done for, for many, many decades. It's simply copying that. And, and more recently, the, the news we got about insider trading, again, same stuff that has been happening and figured out the scams that have been tried uh, for a long time in Wall Street being just brought into the crypto space and all the Ponzi schemes that Wall Street folks invented. Uh, again, being copied in, in crypto, uh, bitcoins like Terra Luna and things like that. So uh, you 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 could see if you if you if you think about it, you could see uh, every single scam that happened in traditional markets and somehow got curtailed a little bit with regulations is now finding it's finding a new life in in crypto. Mm, exactly, exactly. Uh, if any one of you has a question, you can raise your hand or you can send your question in the chat. We're going to answer your questions. But other than that, I think we covered it all, right, Sina? That's pretty much it. Maybe we can. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we talked already about everything. Uh, any last words you have for us, Icarus, before we close up the room? Yeah. Thank you. I'd just like to add um, that the transparency that we had in Bitcoin's technology uh, is one of the keys that uh, would not allow this corrupted system to forge documents. Many of the scams and these Ponzi schemes had been proven by the regulators uh, based on the forged documents. Um, Bitcoin technology does not allow that, okay? And uh, I hope that mm, people realize that. As, as you have mentioned, RK, that the regulations and reg regulatory implemented implementations are going to come up, as we saw, like even the IMF um, had released something, had announced something. And um, but and also SEC. There is another war. There's another war is coming up uh, based on these blockchains and making money out of thin air, and it's the war control. This is so dangerous. Absolutely. Um, yeah. This is. I I think this is the the let's say pressing matter of uh, people who are involved in this business, influencers and people who realizes the dangerous and the dark future of this world control over the stable coins, which is going to, let's say, come out of um, those CBDCs. The outbreak of these stable coins, let's say shit stable coins would be so dangerous for our future and for the future of humanity 
uh, I, I hope we have some time to talk about it, to, men, to uh, let's say, declare and expand um, the consequences, the horrible consequences of these issues. Thank you. Thank you uh, for sharing your knowledge with us, Sinan RK, and thank you for having me with you. Thank you for coming, Icarus. We highly appreciate right. you ma making the time, really. I really mean that. Thank you so, so much. Um, everyone who, yeah, everyone who is listening, if you're on your podcast application, uh, give us a rating that's going to help us. If you agree with us, uh, give us a good rating. If you don't like us, uh, let us know. We always want to improve. So uh, feel free to reach out to us anywhere. Uh, give us a follow on Twitter if you like. We always post updates there as well. Uh, if you want to talk with us in these sessions that we also record and publish in a podcast form, you can join us every Friday on Clubhouse. Uh, you can register on Clubhouse and search for BitGuide. We are available there and we talk about these topics every single week in Farsi and in English. And last but not least, we have released a new course about Bitcoin self-custody. It's on the website. Um, plus, we also have released a new article about the uh, investment strategy called DCA. Very, very, very intriguing. Amazingly written by Sina. I highly recommend going and reading it. It's going to help you to zoom out. It's going to help you to dedicate your time to put the right strategy for your future savings. That's what this is all about. This is not about making a quick buck, getting rich over uh, a few days or months. This is about generational wealth transfer. That's what this is all about. Any last words from you, Sina, before we close up? No, awesome. Uh, thanks a lot who joined. Uh, thanks a lot uh, to who joined. Uh, wait for the episode to come out. Um, and then uh, we will also post the link to the YouTube video as well, where you can uh, see uh, the, the charts being shared live as well. Awesome. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.